Shocking story from our, our law enforcement update block here. From Yahoo, teen jailed for missing online classwork shows how schools and courts oppress black students. Now, someone who is supportive of the general cause of the movement of Black Lives Matter. I I hear that I I read this and I was skeptical. Like, wait a second. You put a teenager in jail for missing an online class. And there's a racial bias that now, of course, yeah, there's is there is there, there gonna be a if, if this is a thing, yeah, there's gonna be a general expression of bias based on poverty, you know, like if if just being connected to an online government school is now a requirement for you as a kid in America to stay out of jail, people who are poor with less reliable internet connections are going to be more susceptible to confusion and disconnect and get into. So yeah, yeah, there's going to be there's going to be a racial angle, but like. Courts, schools and courts oppress black students? Well, let's read on, shall we? While school districts all over the country grapple with how to best educate youth this upcoming academic year doing, during a global pandemic, one Michigan teen sits in a juvenile detention center with no prospect of returning to in-person or remote learning anytime soon. Now, just... I. I can't even go any further in the story without pointing out the, just the, the significance of that statement. This person is now physically removed from their education. Yes, you can get books in jail. Yes, occasionally you know, newspapers, things like that. It is still a, a, a mind-numbing challenge to go to jail one way there's there's no way around it. there is a deprivation that is inherent to the nature of the punishment they're not isolating you for your own good or for the good of society this is a punishment system not a justice system remember justice is you have a real crime with a victim and everybody involved does their best to make the victim whole right coming primarily from the perpetrator, the person responsible. That's justice. Punishment is, you did something I didn't like, so I'm going to cause pain or suffering or take something away from you to try to control your behavior and to make this threat clear to others to control their behavior. Kids who go to jail are subject to this kind of abusive behavior by adults, this deprivation, whether it's by jail or at home, uh, this has lasting effects that don't lead to them being upstanding, productive members of society, just by and large. Surprise, surprise. You've heard of recidivism rate. People who go to jail, go back to jail, right? You think a 15-year-old going through this experience is not going to be adversely affected? And they say, they say all these policies, they're for the children. It's for education, right? No, this is about conditioning. This reveals in and of itself the massive hypocrisy of the entire system of forced schooling. The 15-year-old only identified as Grace has been in jail since May. Since May. This story is dated today, July 21st, because she violated the terms of her probation by not completing her online coursework. Grace, who is black and has diagnosed ADHD, was on probation for fighting with her mom and stealing a cell phone from a classmate. Th th these are not things that justify violence being used against an individual. Not even close. 
After her school transitioned to remote learning on April 15th, Grace said she felt unmotivated and overwhelmed by the work for her school located in the predominantly white community of Beverly Hills, Michigan. Judge Mary Ellen Brennan, the presiding judge of the Oakland County Family Court Division. Remember, family court, not subject to the same levels of accountability, transparency, and due process as government pretends that courts in America actually are. That's true of many students displaced from their schools, but calling Grace a threat to the community. She sentenced the teen to Children's Village Juvenile Detention on May 14. Now Grace's mother, Therese, and advocates across the accuse the courts of racial bias. It just doesn't make any sense. Every day I go to bed thinking and wake up thinking, how is this a better situation for her? This is her mother. The, 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 the alleged, the, 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 one of the uh, alleged victims here who had a fight with her daughter. So they took her away. Sean G Gabadon, professor of criminal justice at Penn State, Harrisburg, said, that's just a total devaluation of black lives. We see this in countless other areas of the justice system. Threat to the community. This, this judge is a threat to the community. Grace's teacher, Catherine Tarpe, has also come to the teen's defense. Tarpe argues that Grace's performance during the pandemic was not out of alignment with most of my other students trying to adjust. Last Thursday, the Michigan Supreme Court said it is reviewing the circumstances of Grace's case after attorneys filed a motion court seeking an emergency review. Oh, government, an emergency review after she's been in jail for about two months. Yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah. That evening, in a rally organized by the Michigan Liberation Organization, more than 200 people stood outside the Oakland County Court chanting, Grace for Grace, and held signs that read Free Grace. Their message was, while they fight for grace, this is bigger than any one teen. No child should be treated like this. And yeah, this, this is really disturbing. This is... This, I'm scared. I mean, I'm my wife and I are getting ready to It's you know, I'm not. I mean, we're still in the practice phase, but you know, we're we're preparing and planning, and it's scary that on top of all of the inherent biological challenges of making babies, you have to think. Well, what if the state's going to steal them? What if my neighbor? Says, oh, I saw him smoking pot on a video. He's a bad parent. CPS now is called and kids get taken away. And I, I mean, and I understand for a lot of parents, like, hey, you're already paying taxes. You're already having this money stolen from you to pay for, you know, these indoctrination centers. Might as well take advantage of it as a, you know, free babysitting service. But it's not free. The cost of your child's mind, future, there's... And, you send your kid to a government school and go, well, I'll, if they teach them something wrong, I'll correct them. Well, you're teaching your kids something wrong that you should trust government with their time and attention and education at all, because this is a consequence. And with or without the racial angle here, you know, again, is this distinctly targeting black people? It, Sure looks that way. Is it, you know, systemic racism that's incidental to, you know, history and circumstance rather than deliberate racism now? Sure. It, could, could it be a sort of, and I hate to call it benign, because there's no such thing as, a benign, as benign racism, really, but, you know, benign, you know, an expression through ben, of racism through benign intent? No. Yeah, there, there's no excuse for this, but he, with, without the racial component at all, can you still trust government with your kids' education, with their time, with their energy, with with anything at all? No. Uh, just to skip ahead to the end of the story here, Sharissi Evans, 
A Michigan Liberation Corps member leader was present outside of Monday's hearing. She says that she believes if Grace was white, she wouldn't be in jail that long or at all. As a lifelong resident of Michigan, Evans, 43, can't make sense of why this is happening at 14. Evans said she stuck up a pizza delivery man and was sentenced to two months in juvenile detention. Grace is going on three. I don't understand, said Evans, who is now a homeowner, college graduate, and entrepreneur. For many academics and policy experts, stories like Grace are the stories of many black youth across the country. It was already hard to show up to chemistry for young people, said Garrison. When you add remote learning, it's harder to equitably provide learning. And unless we reckon with this, we will have a grace over and over again. I would only add, please don't let it be your child. 